This episode of Twin Cities Trekkies is brought to you by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor before, let me explain. First of all, it's free. There are creation tools that help you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. You can easily make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership required. They'll also help you to distribute your podcast so it can be heard on many different platforms such as Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's all you need in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Alright everyone, welcome to the slightly delayed one year anniversary episode of Twin Cities Trekkies. I am Wes. And I'm Kenzie. Yeah! One year! Woo! I know. <laughs> Crazy. It wouldn't Crazy. be it wouldn't be a year without a delay though. Like that's just yeah. kind of how things go, especially with uh with me being around and life in general just this past year has been kind of crazy. So Yeah. Yeah, so technically this is episode 38, but this is definitely our one-year anniversary episode, so yep. slightly delayed. It would have been last week, but, you know, life happened, so yep. it, it, it happens. So that's pretty much what we've been going by for the last year or so. Yep. Uh, yep, so life does happen on occasion, so, <laughs> so yeah, so that's okay. So, yeah, so we're going to be talking about, like, you know, how we felt so far doing this for the past year, doing this and uh, enjoying what we're doing, stuff like that. So, so it might be short. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, <laughs> short and sweet, or it could be a long-winded love letter or hate letter for this past year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so, so yeah. So get in touch with us. It's simple. Send us an email at tctrekkiespodcast at gmail dot com. Feel free to send us an email with anything you like to say. Granted, if you've listened to us over the past year, we definitely would enjoy what you're what, what what you've liked about it, what you haven't liked about it, you know, that kind of thing. Anything is feasible for us, you know. Definitely we're we've done this for a year, but you know, we are always going to improve, I think. Exactly. That's so growth mindset. It's all what life yep. is about. Exactly. Yep. And yep. You can also let us know on Facebook and Instagram. The handle is TC Trekkies Pod. Uh, speaking of that, we had when I posted about um, the one year anniversary, a uh, Star Trek podcast by the name of Starship Tempest did congratulate us on ha- hitting that one year milestone. Awesome. So, uh, yep. And they're they're like a more of a role playing podcast, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, role playing Star Trek podcast. So. I mean, they, like all the people who are involved do like different roles and that kind of thing. So, That's yeah. So Starship, so Starship Tempest did tell us, uh, did say congratulations on making it this far, and I responded to them saying, like, you know, wow, I never expected we get this far. <laughs> but hey, you know, if people are out there and enjoy listening to us, that's fine with me. I, I mean, I enjoy doing this with you and stuff like that. So yeah. that's that's the main thing about it. Is I, I enjoy doing this. Exactly. It's yeah. meant to be so, something yeah. fun and, for us. Yep, and if you have a a voice message for us, you can send us a voice message by going to anchor.fm slash Twin Cities Trekkies. Once you, get, once you get there, hit that little message button and make sure you turn on your microphone so we can hear you. So, and, you know, just keep in mind that any feedback you do leave, vocal or written, may be featured in a future episode of this podcast. Okay, so we have some interesting news lately out of the Star Trek universe. First of all, um, if uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, Kenzie. This was actually kind of fairly new. So Connor Turnier and Dominic Keating, who are stars of Star Trek Enterprise, 
have started a, 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 a enterprise video cast, I should say. Mm, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah, this was fairly new. It was fairly announced a couple weeks ago by Connor Trenier himself, actually, on social media, because he's actually more active than Dominic Keating is. Uh, so, um, he announced that him and Dominic are going to be doing uh, a, a start, an enterprise kind of like video cast, you know, uh, talking about anything related to their show that they were on for four seasons and, uh, and stuff like that. So they've had two episodes so far. Um, they launched on the 20th anniversary of the first airing of Shuttlepod 1. Hmm. So that classic first season episode of Enterprise. So they did a table read of that episode. So they had hit, they had both of them doing their parts, but then also had Gary Graham, who was in that Enterprise as the Masters of All, did the voice of Archer, and um, some other um, some other friends of theirs did other voices for uh, to Paul and Hoshi, and stuff like that. So um, <laughs> um, I haven't got a chance to watch the whole thing through and through, but uh, they have done. Two episodes so far. Their first real episode just dropped today, which is February twentieth. Um, they dropped their first episode. They talked with Doctor Fox himself, John Billingsley. Nice. So, <laughs> and oh, I've watched okay. a little bit of it. It, it. it it it's really fun. It's called the Shuttle Pod Show. So that's what it's called, Shuttle Pod Show. It's on YouTube, stuff like that, and it's it's really. I've watched like. 10, 15 minutes of that episode with John Billings in today, and it was hilarious. Yeah. You know, them, and them talking about, you know, Star Trek and stuff like that, because they mentioned that, uh, like, John Billings was the guest, was the, was the guest, and he talked about, um, he's the, um, head of the Hollywood, um, food thing. I forgot his name, something with food insecurity in the, ho- in, in Los Angeles. So he's the head of the nonprofit for that. And oh, he mentioned yeah. something about the Trek Talks um, uh, telethon they had late last year um, to raise money for that nonprofit. They raised $75,000 to help food insecurity oh. and stuff like that. They had, I mean, it was put on by them and also by the Trek Geeks podcast. So that's um, Dan, De- um, what's his name? Dan and Bill Smith uh, uh, <laughs> from Trek Geeks. And stuff like that. So they launched that last year, and it was like an eight-hour marathon. Never got a chance to watch it. They had a bunch of panels on there, a bunch of uh, behind-the-scenes people and stars like Billingsley. They, I think, I think they had the the, the Akudas on the show too. I think I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Mike and Denise Akuda and David Livingston and stuff like that. So they had a few of those things to raise seventy-five thousand dollars to help um, food insecurity during these difficult times with the pandemic. Yeah. So. So that's what they've been. That's what they. That's, so that's the Shadow Pod show, um, and stuff like that. It's gonna be. I think it's weekly. So it's not weekly available on Sundays on YouTube. So that's what they're gonna be doing, and um, it's kind of in the same vein of the Delta Fires podcast. If you ever heard of that one, mm-hmm. Kenzie, that one is hosted by Garrett Wong and Robert Duncan McNeil. They rewatch Voyager. Oh, so, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, so it's kind of in the same vein of that, but that's why I was understanding that it was an Enterprise Rewatch podcast. It's like theirs. Yeah. But no, it, it's different. It's different. Yeah. Than theirs. I, mean, I think that's like a big part of podcasting, video casting, any of that is just finding your own voice and what it is you even want to do and kind of figuring it out along the way. Like, I've seen a lot of TV shows get doing that now where they make a podcast with their like fellow actors. Because yep. it's just like a way for them to spend time together and talk about things. And I think for them, it can be helpful and, you know, keep their network yeah. alive and well and sometimes bring more opportunity. So I haven't yeah. really, I didn't really get into a lot of podcasts for the longest time. Just I would like here and there, like NPRs, like mm-hmm. anything with Ira Glass, like uh, listening to uh, like This American Life and just radio stuff more than like podcasts. Yeah. But I've been like branching out. I was listening to the Always Sunny podcast with some of the characters from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. So it's cool to hear ones for Star Trek too, and I'll have to check those out. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. So that's what they, that's what that's what uh, Garrett Wong and uh, Robert Duncan McNeil do. They rewatch Voyager. They're in the middle of I think in the middle of season four now of watching Vo- rewatching Voyager. 
for for the Delta Flyers, um, stuff like that. So, and I know that they, it's kind of like in the same vein of like watching off, uh, listening to Office Ladies too. Um, that that is Angela Kinsey and Jenna Fisher rewatching The Office. Uh, oh yeah, and talking about it with with, the, with their background of being on the show for nine years. So and stuff like that. So there you go. <laughs> There, there's a lot. There, I think I think a lot more actors are trying to do that now to like yeah. you know, still still do stuff, but then you know still do stuff on the on on it's TV nice and, because and it's like giving movies. them their own like their own power to just be whatever they want to be. Yeah. With people, which like it's like for like shows, you're being paid as a job, and and mm-hmm. this is more just like a chance for them to hobby and have fun with whatever it is they want yeah. to interact with people about. Yeah, and. Since since they do their own podcast, they can talk about their how they were on the show, how it all went down, and it, it, they're offering their own perspective because they were there. So, and that's why I think that's what uh, both both Delta Fires and Office Ladies do. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. They're doing that starting this week, starting this month. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, we actually have some news about Strange New Worlds, both controversy and controversial and also good news too finally something though at least that's all it really is yes. i say good overall because at least they're talking about it again and it's not like a like did i have a fever dream that this was actually happening or <laughs> like it's just real because I, I haven't heard from about it for so long that everyone's like what's yeah what's going on with that did that get like put on the back burner did that get put away with the project <laughs> well Here's the deal. They got their composer for Strange New Worlds. It's Nani Melumad, hmm. who does Prodigy. So, That's exciting. Uh, yeah, uh, she announced it on a Strange New Pod just two weeks ago. So she has been on their show a couple times. She did once for Prodigy, an episode of Prodigy that they reviewed. Um, they do every Thursday night. They do um, a live stream and like, 9 30 our time which is central time but they yeah. do um they they do a live stream every thursday night after a new episode of star trek drops on paramount plus so melio mad has been on the show twice she did once for a prodigy episode and then when uh discovery came back last week she came back on the show and announced that she is the composer for strange new worlds so uh so she announced that she has done the first seven episodes so far, scored the first seven episodes. There's 10 for the season. But uh, so she's almost done scoring the season and composing it and, you know, putting the music into the episodes. And she's, she's, she says that she's really happy about it. She's really excited about the fans actually seeing it. And so like that people will be very happy and stuff like that once the show actually drops in May. So, so Mario, so she'll, she'll be coming, she'll be doing the pro, she'll be doing the scores, but unfortunately that's all she's doing is the episodic scores. Hmm. Um, it has, it has been reported by her and it was confirmed by IMDB and trekmovie.com that Jeff Russo is doing the title, the title sequence. So I, I I'm kind of disappointed personally yeah. because, you know, I would have loved to have seen her do her own take on the theme for this show, for the main title theme. But um, I understand, you know, you need some collaboration and stuff like that because that's what she does for Prodigy, just the episodic scores. And Michael yeah. Giacchino did the did the title sequence. It might for just Prodigy. be like a thing, like that. That's her. That's her niche. You know, like that's what she. Yeah, but yeah what she's I mean, I would. If she's okay with that, that's you know, that's that, good. Yeah, it's if, if she's okay with it, that's eh, fine. I mean, but it's disappointing. But um, but who knows? Maybe down the line with new shows down the line, which by the way we have two of them I can mention, uh, that, like stuff like that. She could probably do the the theme song for uh, the theme music for one of their shows. Yeah. Uh, they said that. We we're expecting more news about the Section 31 show soon, they said. that We haven't heard anything else sent, but – and stuff like that. So it may be starting – the wheels are starting to turn on that show, Section 31. And 
Uh, there is a report out from Deadline Hollywood that was on the 1st of this month, February, that the Starfleet Academy show could be starting to get some wheels going on that one as well. Um, uh, there's some, I, I don't know what the person who created it uh, is uh, in the process of pitching this a take on the show. But uh, we that's a show that can be set in any era. So it could be set after Enterprise, could be set after the original series films, or heck, even with Discovery, Mary Wiseman has left uh, has temporarily left the show, done like there's, there's this one episode of Discovery season four in which she's with a group of cadets mm-hmm. on a planet. So she and she was offered a teaching role at the new Starfleet Academy in the in the thirty one hundreds. So it could potentially she could potentially leave Discovery and lead that show. Yeah. Who knows? That would be cool too. Yeah. Also, so I, I, love, I love shows where they're out branching that more though. Like that was like my I was excited about with like lower decks where it's like focusing on the other people in places mm-hmm. around like just a captain crew like a captain and a crew on the yeah. bridge, you know, like actually checking out people behind the scenes. Like I would love to see a whole, a whole storyline about people going through, like getting, becoming cadets and going through Starfleet Academy. Like that'd be epic. There's so many backstories to each of the captains, especially like, I mean, probably the most crazy besides Kirk. Yeah. Is, uh, um, yeah. With, uh, you don't know Brit- like a, yeah. a heart getting stabbed through the heart and everything that's during Starfleet Academy and like all of his stories and fights and things. Mm-hmm. Like I want to hear more of that. Yeah, and that's fine. And it, it, yeah, like um, Prodigy's geared towards kids, and everything else is geared towards adults. But you know, with the Starfleet Academy show, you can get potentially the young adults, like yeah. people, who, like which I know is like the all important 18 to 24 demographic or That's anywhere from like 15 onward. Yeah. 15 to 18 and 18 to 24. So demographic, you know, so who knows what's going to happen with that. So the hope is that this person, I don't know what the name of the name of the person is. It's someone that I don't know has going to be pitching a take on the, take on the subject with uh, Paramount plus, And it's hopefully they're going to get it going by the end of the year. So um, regarding like casting, production, filming, that kind of thing. So it probably won't be until t- it probably won't be until the end. One of the shows ends, obviously. But so, like I said, it probably most likely will be Picard who ends first. But yeah. um, but who knows? Uh, stuff like that. So um, so uh there is unfortunately some sad gaming news um bridge crew which was a vr game that was developed a few years ago is being somewhat disappearing is somewhat disappearing off of like places like oculus and steam it's just like not being supported anymore by them like those platforms yeah i guess that's what i understand it it could be a license issue it's unclear as to why okay but who um, who licenses that i who, I don't remember who, who does that? it. Um, I it don't mean? remember who did Bridge Crew, Star Trek Bridge Crew. I just wanted to see who did. Cause I guess I didn't even actually. Ubisoft did it. Yeah, Ubisoft developed de- developed this game. It was a it was a virtual rea- virtual reality game, and you were in the charge of like like an old uh, your own crew and stuff like that. So it's so unclear as to why, but there's may- maybe a licensing issue. So it's yeah. kind of sad. Yeah, it's too bad. Um, oh, I've and it, so I've not done yeah, any never, VR. I don't. I've never really tried VR, so it might. Be, I, I would love to try it sometime if I ever have a chance. I I, I, I tried it once. It was a little disorienting. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what I was thinking. Where I was like, I I still have yet to do it because there's never been much of an experience that I thought I'd want to be fully immersed in without it just being like I'm looking at it. Like I'm fine observing stuff, not being surrounded by it. Yeah, yeah. So that's what's going on. I don't know. Is it the maybe a licensing issue with Ubisoft and Paramount Global and stuff like that? Uh, speaking of Paramount Global, that is actually the new name for Viacom CBS. They, as of this past week, they are no longer called that. 
It is called Paramount Global. Hmm. So, yeah. So, but we call it Paramount just for simple marketing reasons. Yeah. Was there any yeah. reason for the change or just? Yeah, they, they said just they wanted to have more of like a broader, like as Paramount Plus expands, which will be this summer and stuff like that, starting in the summer and continuing throughout the next year and stuff like that. They kind of wanted to like be more unified in terms mm-hmm. of like the branding and stuff like that. So, yeah. So that is what Paramount Global is now. It is no longer called Viacom CBS. So, yep. They said they wanted to make a more iconic global name to in, to increase their worldwide focus. So, and um, yeah. So the uh, the LGBTQ magazine out if you ever heard of that kenzie um it's a publication dedicated to like lgbtq community members and stuff like that they had a six uh, they had like a a, a special Star Trek discovery um uh feature uh to celebrate the seven recurring and main cast members who are part of that community which would be take notaro Lou Del Barrio, Ian Alexander, Mary Wiseman, Emily Coots, and Anthony Rapp and Wilson Cruz. Um, and I I read some of the articles. It's it's they were talking about, like for example when uh, Rapp and Wilson were uh, Cruz were interviewed, they talked about being about being the first gay couple in Star Trek and stuff, like mm-hmm. that, which was kind of which was kind of cool. But the one that was really kind of cool to read about was for Emily Coots. Um, she obviously she's coming out. She's she's part of the community now. She came out in 2020, actually. Yeah. To yep, and but during the re, she, she found out she can be more open when when they were doing the uh, table read for the final episode of season two of Discovery, um, which was called Such Sweet Sorrow. Uh, she found out that. Uh, she could be more open to her castmates and stuff like that if she when they were doing this doing the filming and stuff like that of the mm-hmm. of the fina- fi- finale, which was kind of interesting to see hear that happening. You know, it's like Star Trek actually helps them be more comfortable in who they are and stuff like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. You know that uh, that that she uh, came out uh, she came out to her castmates, let the whole public know later on and stuff like that. It's nice to know that. Uh... That these different shows, especially like in Star Trek, that it's like helping people feel like they're part of a mm-hmm. community and finding themselves. Because as opposed to being on a show where you know they have a terrible experience and it's stressful or something, you know, like it seems like a lot of cast members feel like they're family and that they feel close to people and have a good relationship with their like coworkers. Yeah, so that's what. Um, yeah, that was. That was interesting reading that article from about her. So, so that was interesting nice to say to about hear. that. Some wholesome, wholesome news, wholesome reading. Yeah, yep. Um, and now this might be a been a, may have been a joke or it was probably absent blindly, but one of the producers of Star Trek Prodigy may have slipped some of their ideas out for what they were planning to do for season two, which is um, is I read the tweet. Because it was posted on Daily Star Trek News, um, and he had they had somewhat jokingly ideas for a sequel to Time Zero by having Mark Twain come back, <laughs> um, and Tendi being a captain but being Chakotay from an alternate timeline. <laughs> so, so it may have been a joke. It, it may it may have been a joke, or it could have been. What they were really planning. This is why I like so. Lower Decks, though, because honestly, given what they've done the, like for their past episodes, none of it would surprise me. It's like, it could be a joke, but they also might be completely serious because they've done crazier things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we also have some movie news. We have finally figured out what that Shackman, Matt Shackman movie will be, what yeah. timeline will be. It will be the Kelvin timeline. It will be a fourth Yay. Kelvin timeline film. J.J. <laughs> Abrams revealed that at the Investor Day event this past week for Paramount and its shareholder for Paramount and its shareholders. 
saying that we're hard at work working on a new Star Trek movie featuring our, our original cast, and uh, we can't wait for you to see it, um, stuff like that. Pretty much what, that's what it was to, yeah. to an extent. So it is the film being directed by Matt Shackman. So um, uh, that's what we understand. It will be that movie. Um, so it could be, we don't know anything about, it could be a reworking of the original Beyond sequel story. Who knows? It could be a completely different story. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but they're they're gonna they're gonna try to uh, they're gonna the contract negotiations are ongoing to bring back the original cast of those films. Say, uh, of, of course, without Anton Yelchin, obviously, yeah. which is. Uh, yeah. But I've always said this, and I I completely am on board with this theory. If they because. Abrams said that they would never recast Anton Yelchin when he passed away yep. six years ago. So he said they would never recast him. So how do you explain the president of Chekhov, but then put a navigator in an enterprise? Well, first of all, you could put some reason why he's off the yeah. ship. I'm you can sure write that in. That out. Yeah. But, but who can replace him as a navigator? Here's my theory. A woman of color in a hijab. Yeah. So, because the reason why I say that is because it could show that Star Trek is still being progressive without being backwards. Yeah. And so like that. Oh, like, and it, it and could, it embodies with the original reason why they had Chekhov in the first place, yeah. like being mm-hmm. like that. It's it's like a political outreach of the sign of the times of like when the yeah. show was created, being like, look, somebody from like where now you know the Soviet Union can coexist among other people from across mm-hmm. earth and across planets just fine. Yep. And like, look how yep. great and trivial our problems are because it doesn't matter in the future. And I feel like that would be a great way to say the same thing again, being like, look at these things that people are upset about that politicize and be, you know, so critical about, but it doesn't matter in the Star Trek universe because it does. Yeah. It's. It doesn't matter. Everybody's working together, and we're all in it together. Yeah, exactly. That's my thinking. Exactly for putting a woman in a hijab. You know, a woman of color in a hijab. In a hijab. Yeah. So, because it could be a federation planet that practices Islam, still, and yeah. you know, like you know, kind of like kind of like what the um uh the uh um what's it called. That uh, Native American planet in Next Generation, you know, oh, uh, yeah. kind of like that kind of thing. Like they 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 left Earth. They became they 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 are still celebrating their traditions yep. and stuff like that. So there could be a similar kind of situation with. Um, and I feel like that's very this, it's very realistic because for a lot of races, especially important ones in the Federation, like the Bajorans, mm-hmm. are very open practice religion. Like yeah, people like it's it's completely tied to their their entire species is religious practice, and so it's not to be said that like religion should not have a place in the Star Trek universe or that that's something that yeah. just isn't viable in the future because it is. It's been written in and it yeah. works successfully, and mm-hmm. some have very like almost religious like like some would argue even Vulcans besides being people of science that that is their religion, like the way that they behave and act and practice that is all based around almost a religious view of science. Yeah. And that's what I think that, with, that I could see that happening, you know, be yeah. progressive, but also, you know, because I'm thinking about like, not only just that, but also with what happened in Afghanistan last year yeah. with, the, with, with the withdrawal of the U S U S forces in that country. And so with that, a bunch of refugees now are in our country mm-hmm. from that conflict are in this country now. And it, it could be the same way, you know, you know, kind of thing. I, th- I think about the same thing regarding that. So anyway, yeah. So that is the movie that's coming out in December of 2023. We're going to get a Kelvin timeline film. The reason I'm why saying. they're going to, the reason why they're going to do it is because Paramount cited market research saying that there is still a viable audience for this cast. Um, so with that, they cited market research saying that this cast still has market value. Well, I still, so. like most of my friends, like at least our generation, like age group, mm-hmm. it was the Trek that came out. Like uh, that was yeah. big. That wasn't a TV show. Like 
they actually have like a movie series around recognizable characters but taking a new spin on it like to this day like most of my friends that is their main and only exposure to star trek is those movies because i don't know tv tv series especially ones that are just so big like star trek i think could be a bit intimidating and for the most part from what i hear from people it's so much more approachable to have movies and those were a perfect way to engage with people around star trek so most of my friends i was like when they think star trek they're thinking kelvin timeline star trek so i'm excited for it yes it means my best friend and i can go to a movie together that's star trek and she'll love it (laughs) Yeah, exactly, and that's and that's that's a good thing that they're gonna do still do this cast, even though the cast at this point has done three movies in the span of seven years. But then, but then it's been six years since the last one, so uh, you know it may be a little bit different now. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, people are are like, I'll believe it when I hear that the cast is indeed coming back. Yeah, so. I think that's probably the biggest thing. I, I'd assume they'd all come back, unless there's just some crazy reason that they don't yeah. want to, or if it was like a bad experience. But it doesn't sound like that. If if they're already like, yeah, we're just working on getting that all set up. It doesn't sound like I've ever heard any outcry of it being a bad production time no. or a bad experience no. for people. So the only thing is just yeah. that the the gap left by losing somebody who's close to the crew, like somebody who's important yeah. to the story. Like that's definitely tough, and I could see that being like the only thing that's probably a bit, probably a bit hard to be like we're all going to get back together, but without him, and it yeah, without an- without yeah, without Anton Yelchin, yeah. So it's going to be it's going to be hard. I mean, yeah. I I, be- I imagine like the first few days is going to be hard coming back yeah. onto the bridge of the Enterprise and seeing that he's not there. Yeah, you know, because they were all because unlike the original series cast which the new cast is based on, they all got along. Yeah. So, know, isn't that so funny to hear? Like, I, that's what I was thinking about, too, of, like, man, there's a lot of lot of drama and decrying from the original series. Like, you could definitely hear stories about mm-hmm. how they do not like each other and, were, oh, yeah. you know, like, left this world on bad terms with people. And But it, it seems like all later series tend to be pretty, like good with each yeah. other like not yes. a lot of drama yeah. it's just yes. i think just for being a first time thing very very different crew in a very different time i think it's definitely kind of in an old world view trying to break the mold that star trek's trying to push past the present and into the future and i feel like that was bound to bring out some bad blood of like people not willing not being willing to accept the vision that star trek had but they would they wouldn't mind the money and getting paid so they were you know partook in in that whole series even if they didn't agree with it yeah exactly and you know it's like you know and that, I think that's one thing that's that's kind of like uh but they all got along this kelvin cat crew yep. got along and it's going to be hard when they come back on set because they're hoping they're going to be filming by the end of this year so okay. so Whenever they start filming this movie, whenever it starts and stuff like that, the first few days are going to be very, very hard, uh, especially for people who were uh, some of the cast who were very, very close to Anton Yelchin. Yeah. So, I mean, the whole cast was, but there were a few others who were closer than they were, than others were. So it's going to be very, very hard. Uh, I, I can imagine it'd be very, very hard. But but who knows what's going to happen? I mean, yeah. What, yeah. I mean, we've had false starts in the last six years. So yeah, I don't know. I know. I'm like to to bring it all together. That's just life, right? We, like from our podcast yeah. all the way out to watching yeah. any, any of the movies and their development, we've had seen plenty of that happen. Delays due to the current state of the world, down to personal yep. reasons for people. Like it it happens, but you know, yep. Star Trek's gonna keep on rolling. So as long as we all keep happens. having that hope, that's all that matters. Yep, and a um, couple more, th- a couple, few more things here. I mean, we're talking about the news a lot, a lot lately. Uh, Paramount Plus is expanding, obviously, like I mentioned before. Uh, they mentioned uh, they had what is going to be available to Paramount Plus subscribers elsewhere, uh, the UK, Ireland, um, stuff like that. We'll get it this summer. That includes South Korea 
and France as well. So they'll have those countries as well included in their expansion. But we don't know about any other plans for Africa or the rest of Asia uh, until it, but it's more likely going to happen next year. Yeah. But the but the goal is to have Paramount Plus everywhere by 2024. So that's the, that's a goal because they reported about 50 million subscribers, uh, 50 60 million subscribers um, at their event. Uh, already have signed up in many different countries, not just not just the United States and and other countries that already have it. But it with one year still with one year down. They've had about 50 million subscribers, so across many different ter- a few territories already, not just the United States. So, but um, that may complicate further distribution of new Star Trek content. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. And this leads into the controversy, actually. So uh, during the event for the Star Trek era, a uh, part of the Investor Day event for Paramount Properties. Um, they, they, they had announcements for other shows like South Park will be coming back to Paramount will be coming to Paramount Plus in 2025 after the HBO Max streaming rights expire. Hmm. Um, yeah, <laughs> and they're gonna like, and Halo the the Halo TV show got renewed for a second year without even one episode I coming know. out yet. Like that's so funny. I, you know, I always get may, hope that that means it's good because people have like signed off on it and they were like, yeah, this is going to be great. But also you never know. Yeah. You never know. Like, yeah. Halo season two will be coming after night without even one episode shown yet. Uh, Beavis and Butthead will be coming back. <laughs> so yeah. that, that was, that was not just the only the events that were mentioned that all oh, their Paramount Viacom properties. But this is where the controversy happened. So apparently at the event, there was a trailer for Strange New Worlds. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just going to mention this because, uh, so don't kill us, Paramount. <laughs> <sighs> but but what had happened was there were fan sites like Trek Central and Trek Sphere and Trek Core and stuff like that were reporting on this trailer. They were sharing screen caps captures from this trailer mm. which showed which showed pictures of the enterprise showed uh pike uh number one and and spock and stuff like that and and uhura cadet uhura and roughly it, it was shared about 3 30 our time and about three hours later they were all taken down yeah i mean yeah they were all taken down. Uh, a few um, Twitter feeds got suspended. Oh, Trek Central uh-huh. being one of them. So being one of them. But uh, was it was it known that it was was it like a leak and people knew it was a leak or were they just not? It was not known it was a leak and then they like misconstrued it, thinking it had already been released to the public. What had happened was um, this trail was only shown to its investors. It was never meant to be shown to the public. Oh. And uh, they were under the impression that they could share whatever the heck they want. Regarding yeah, because I would. Uh, and- I feel like that's a big thing. Like you really have to make sure you understand, like what, like who's yeah. allowed to see it. I don't know if that was just misconstrued or not. Uh, like not. I think specified. it was an honest mistake. Yeah. I think it was an honest. I think it was an honest mistake that people were sharing them. Yeah. But a lot of but a lot of sites were like saying we gotta respect the IP, yeah. you know, and, and take it down. I mean, I know Trek Central's admin team were very very angry. Yeah, uh, we're very very well, angry. Because then you Paramount. wonder who, how they get it. Was it intentional? Did somebody leak it, or was it just like somebody didn't realize? Like that. I yeah, mean, they it, didn't is, realize. it is a tough situation because it it definitely it falls on the on the realm of like not having enough information about sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. But hopefully so, people don't uh, feel bad about it because it's not their fault. No, it's not. It's not their fault. It really, it wasn't their fault. Um, yeah. Yeah. It really wasn't their fault. I don't blame them at all. I mean, I mean, it's an honest mistake. 
um, and stuff like that. And I have been very, very weary about, you know, because I'm a head, head, head admin for a group for Strange New Worlds. I've been very, very hesitant about fans of a group or members of the group actually sharing those photos because yeah. I'm going like, does Paramount really want me to do that? Because I don't really want our group to be contacted by Meta and then shut it down. Uh, I mean, you can always just let yeah. everyone know and just be like, hey, just so you know, like that stuff is getting flagged. Don't post it. Otherwise, you can get our group in trouble. Yeah, that's what I did. I did that. Yeah. I did that. I did, I did do that. Yeah, so that's what's unfortunate what happened. So that's a, a little bit of controversy. Granted, it's controversy that Paramount probably didn't need to happen. Yeah. Uh, but who knows? I mean, it's it's disappointing. And uh, but speaking of, let's start, let's, let's end the news on a high note. Yeah. Well, we we have some uh, pictures of the uh, Playmates toys. Oh, uh, cool. it, the, yeah. So um, earlier this month, they released they revealed their first wave of action figures from a few eras of Star Trek. That would be from Discovery. Uh, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, uh, original series, and Next Generation. So, um, and so like that. They also revealed a Enterprise play toy. So, uh, based on the original series version of Enterprise. So, and so like that. They will be out in stores this fall. It looks super cool. Yeah, and they also revealed the Prodigy toys. The Prodigy toys, too. They also revealed their their, their prodigy line and those will start being shipped out this fall and they'll be in toy stores and toys stores across the country early next year so so we'll get so pretty, pretty much toys i think this was pretty much a good idea to put prodigy out there you know for the kids yeah so, and like, so they I, had their I, own I, adventures yeah <laughs> make their own adventures with the toys so mm-hmm all right. So that's like the end of the let's end the news on a happy note with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking forward to the next year. We have so much in store. And just looking yes, at this we, past year, everything that's happened, it's like culminating now to this year. Yes, 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 it is. You know, over the past year or so, yeah. So this is the one year anniversary show. Woo! <laughs> wow, I never, I never got this far with my old Star Trek podcast, and that was. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I mean, that's. I mean, I like given some of that, like the living and learning, and just finding your voice and everything. So. Yeah, so My yeah, I never got that too. far. I never got that far with the Minnesota Star Trek Nerd Podcast. I never got that far. I got, I got to ten months. <laughs> yeah, it's close. Yeah, I got ten months. I I went I went further than that. So and then you know it's crazy that I've gotten a year. We've gotten a year, and hopefully. A few more to come. Who, who knows? Hopefully, <laughs> with things for, yeah. with life and stuff like that. Hopefully, it doesn't interrupt it too much, you know. Yeah. But uh, we roll with the punches. It's all good. Yep. Oh, I I also forgot to mention in our news segment, we have both signed up to join the virtual premiere for Star yes. Trek Picard season two. So well, thank got it. <laughs> I hope I get invited. Well, it, yeah, yeah, you you more than likely. Okay, you know, that's you, good. Yeah, the more, way they worded it, likely. that was a little like, is this kind of raffly and like you sign up and hopefully you get it, or you just have to kind of know like based on I didn't know how many people had signed up. All I saw was like, you know, just the mention of like it's first come first serve. It'll close once it, it's full. Yeah, and once. Like all right. Yeah, and I think it's probably full by now. Yeah. I would think. So, yeah, so good yeah, on you for uh, reminding me. You were like, do it. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, it's just like, I, I, I forgot to mention that. It's like, you know, because uh, it's, it's, it was fun doing it because I didn't, because I got in on the Discovery one. Yeah. So, and, cool. and it was very, f- very quick. I got in that one. And and then very quick, I got into this one, hopefully. And, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll definitely, we'll How get do you emails. Find out about these? Do you just like, do you just follow places that, 
do watch parties or like how did you hear about that i actually a friend of mine messaged me on facebook about it so that's how i knew about it we can pause if you need to (laughs) you're just being super annoying i'm like for anybody listening to this i have annoying cats um when we record like i have three cats (laughs) and they are pacing they can tell that it's a nice day out in minnesota and they're being super frisky i'm like quit it like well ready to put them on the podcast be like you guys want to talk about star trek is that why you're excited you guys can come (laughs) have your say (laughs) no i actually like finding out about this virtual premiere i found out from a friend of mine actually he messaged me on facebook going like why don't you sign up you need this you want to sign up go for it and you know that's what i did and i encouraged you to do it and i encouraged a few of my other friends who are star trek fans to sign up so they can are you you enjoy enjoy what i did yeah for like i don't know if you're allowed to talk about but just like the setting and the format of it is it like you're all on a call together or you're all just tuning into the same stream or like is it like a virtual watch party or like uh it's a virtual premiere so pretty much um what what will happen is you know granted it's our one year anniversary before, but we can talk about this yeah uh what it happened because like one year anniversary was kind of like a free for all i feel like you know it, it was, was it was yeah. it was so what you'll get um what, what happens is that i'm basing this on what i did with the discovery one back in november um you'll get an email from Paramount Plus about a day before it will be available before it comes out and you'll get a code and a special website to go to and you have to type in that code you can't join it with yeah. like test it about 15 minutes before so 6:15 our time so on that on the second so um so you'll be able to watch the episodes uh, probably will probably get the first two episodes of Picard yeah. season two based on what I'm, I, I'm just basing this on my discovery experience. So yep. I know we'll get the first episode for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we'll get to, we'll get to see it about six hours before everyone else gets to. Yeah. So, and we'll be able to talk about that episode like right away. Like yeah. we'll be able to talk that episode, like, that episode, like roughly about a day or two afterward. Mm-hmm. But if we get episode two, which is probably likely, yeah. So at the end of that one, you'll get a disclaimer saying you are not allowed to divulge anything about what you've just seen. Yep. About this episode until the day after it drops, which will be episode two drops on March 10th. So you'll be able to talk about it after the 10th. Gosh, was that hard? Yeah, that's the only thing it I'd was, be like, oh, man. <laughs> it, that was very, very hard to um, – because I help out on other podcasts. I give them, like, mm-hmm. feedback on episode discovery and stuff like that. And I had seen the first two episodes, and I had to write – I could, I can't say anything about episode two just yeah, yet. But here's what I think it. about episode one. <laughs> yeah, so – and – Stuff like that. So I was helping them out, saying like, "Oh, here's my reaction to episode one. Here's what I liked about it. Here's what I didn't like yeah. about it, and, and stuff like that." And I said, "I can't say anything about episode two yet." Yeah, <laughs> which was really, really hard. It was very, very hard not to say anything about it on social media at all. Mm-hmm. I the only thing I said was the first episodes were amazing. I highly recommend you watch it. Yeah, that's all I could. That's well, all I could say. Going into going into New Year here, we'll get a chance to do a review of the card, hopefully, yeah. and talk about it. Hopefully, yeah, definitely, we'll talk about definitely. I, I'm looking forward to doing this again because it's 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 a lot of fun. Because um, I'm not sure because uh, um, the theme for the premiere of Discovery season four was based around Starfleet Academy. Oh. which was very featured in the first episode of season four. Like they mentioned that they were reopening Starfleet Academy. They were doing all the mm-hmm. same in the wake of after the burn and stuff like that and trying to reunite the federa- reunite the Federation. And they were going to start the new class of 3189 with this new group of cadets and stuff like that. So that was pretty much the, the, the theme of Discovery season four was the premiere for that one was. 
I don't know what they're going to do for the theme of this premiere, but um, I have a feeling it's probably not going to be very, very bright. Yeah. Uh, because of this, because of the top tier, this is the alternate universe. Yep. So I have a feeling that it's going to be very, very like dark and, Probably we'll get to know the name of this organization, this tall totalitarian I'm, federation. I'm curious about that. And just yeah. understanding what's going on. Like I just getting to feel that I'm excited. Yeah, so you'll be able to watch it. Yeah, watch the first two episodes probably and so with that. Participate in our trivia contest. I think they'll probably do that again. They did that for season. Is it hosted season by four. the same people that did the discovery? Or is that it, like, who it, organized it? it? I think it was. I think it will be. Okay. I mean, they were just they were just like actors. I think they were just like random people. Yeah. I think so. But um, they had they had a trivia segment and stuff like that um, with people who were participating in it and stuff like that. Got like I think the winner got to announce that they were gonna watch. We were gonna watch season two, season four, episode two. But. Uh, but I was like, I was expecting that third, fifth season, a, a renewal announcement rather than that back then. Yeah. But, but uh, it's okay because we eventually got the fifth season renewal. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward who to know, it. Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen in this? Um, I'm looking forward to it. Yep. You'll get an email about it and then uh, you'll be able to join yes. in <laughs> and, and talk and, and talk with fans. There'll be a chat chat thing on the side you talk with your fans stuff like talk with fans like yeah. oh this was cool oh it was that cool yeah i mean i'm just looking forward to hearing that and participating it'll be sweet it'll be something cool yeah. for us to talk about yeah and I, I i participated a few times in it and i was saying like mm-hmm. like like i was talking about uh president Rilek, the one of the recurring characters for the season of discovery thought that she was more acting like kai win but that has not for come to fruition for yeah. me. Um, so yeah, so that's what pretty much what happened. So yeah, this would be one thing that we can mention about uh, next year for our second year anniversary. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> talking about this, but yeah. Um, yeah. So the past year, um, we've had some ups and downs. Obviously, you know, regarding this podcast. Obviously, wife well, has our- occurred. Oh, yeah. First, our first episode <laughs> was like a gamble because our first episode had technical difficulties, which was yep. tough. But then we finally yep. got got it figured out and moved forward with that. Yep, we did. Yep, we had audio issues the first two episodes because we recorded two of them. Yep. And that, that's what we generally do is try to record two episodes per every two weeks, just to just you know that way you can have a episode going like every week. But there have been mm-hmm. gaps in it too. Yep. Um, like. We've been small gaps, unlike the long one, but uh, <laughs> we had back in August to September, so through September, and then finally came back in October, right before I left for my trip. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to get interrupted. Oh, my gosh. I will yeah. never go through that again. Not, not yeah. cool. And taking away a ma- major part of you getting to both work and do your hobbies. So, Super yeah. not recommend going through that and just very troubling and sucks because then how do you trust like your apartment to make sure that people aren't, they're not having people move in that do stuff like that. Cause obviously somebody who probably lived in your apartment or had their eyes on you, which is super unfortunate, but all you can hope for is that that doesn't ruin your perspective on humanity or like people less because of that bad experience. Yeah, yeah, it's, it was just crazy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, I know that you know. I think we've had some very good episodes, and I think we've had some really disappointing ones. But that's okay. Uh, we can definitely have we're, we this next year. We're planning a lot bigger, better things, <laughs> mm-hmm. obviously. And uh, I just gotta you know get the ball rolling on that. Yeah, uh, that that's pretty much. It's all fall. It's all my court. I just got to throw the ball in their court. So yeah. <laughs> pretty much. And uh, stuff like that. So we're going to try to get more guests on the show and 
try to get uh we'll be on theirs as they, like i said before we're be cool podcasting for us to be guests. <laughs> yeah so it's like i scratch your back you scratch mine that kind of thing um but stuff like that um i'm uh yeah that's pretty much what we're going to try to do um try to go by the seat of our pants regarding us all this star trek mm-hmm. content but because you know we got like Picard coming up we got strange new worlds we got lower decks and more prodigy at the end of discovery season four so it's a lot of star trek content between now and probably whenever it takes a little break yeah um because we don't know exactly when too like we, yeah, we've done some episodes where we were just talking about episodes of like current Star Trek shows and it'll yep. be exciting to have way more to discuss. Like we have a lot yes. more chances to do discussions and threads and reflections on multiple shows now, rather than just being like predictions or hopes for a new show or announcements. Mm-hmm. It'll be us actually reviewing it and reflecting on it. Yes, totally. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm hoping to. Yeah, to do it this year. I mean, granted, we can like. I think once the trailer comes out for Strange New Worlds, whenever that will be, yeah, um, we'll definitely do it. We we'll definitely do an episode about that. Yeah, that for sure. For sure. <laughs> whenever that, whenever that will be. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So um, I guess that's about it. Um, happy one year, everybody. Um, Virtual cheers. Wait, what's the yeah. what's the cheers in Klingon? Uh, um, I don't know what it is. I don't I, think they have one. I thought they had, always would yell something. Why am I picturing? <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, That's just like a yeah. people yelling that all the time, and I'm like, hey, yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so that's about it for this episode. And next week, episode 39, we're going to do number five of the character analysis about Captain Jonathan Archer. So until then, take care and live long and prosper. Live long and prosper. Prosper.